Hello and welcome to the Manchester City career mode on FIFA 21. Getting it underway on the We Are City channel. Global, worldwide fan channel which we have formed. And we're here today with the Manchester City career mode as you can see here on FIFA 21. It came out uh, on the 9th of October it was, on a Friday. We've had a bit of a mess around and... Here we are. We're going to go straight into the office and show you the board expectations for the season, what we're aiming for, and then how this season we are planning to progress. So we've skipped past the pre-season because, of course, pre-season didn't happen in real life. As you can see here, our objectives are to win the Premier League title, to finish the season with a profit margin of 292.5 million. We're 29% of the way there because we have turned the first transfer window off because we don't need it. We've already made the signs we need. Uh, youth development wise no objectives so we've got no priorities no objectives nothing to do with youth of course we want to bring you through and with the whole new revamp of career mode on fifa 21 from ea sports we are able to develop players in different ways change the position and i think it's all about developing young players from a youth system now which is great to see as for brand exposure that's critical short term it says get seven clean sheets in away matches if anyone's played FIFA 21, you know that is actually going to be a pretty hard uh, objective to reach because defending is ridiculous. It's all about outscoring your opponent this year. Uh, replace three players from the team. I don't know why that is an objective. For whatever reason it is. So we'll get that done. Sell three players. Not hard to do. Uh, long term expand the club in Asia. That, that was something to do with the pre-season which we've already done already. So that was easy enough. Financial. The profit thing, of course, it's not critical at all. It's very low, number five. So we don't need to worry about that if we were to spend money, that was. Uh, win the title, win the FA Cup, which is fair enough, and win the Champions League, which is expected from Pep Guardiola this season. Of course, we are Pep Guardiola. Whether we will be Pep Guardiola next season, that is something to be looking at. Youth Academy-wise, this is our Youth Academy. We've currently got a Dutch midfielder called Gies, I think it is, Postuma. He's a versatile midfielder, can play all across the midfield, 16 years old, doesn't look fantastic if you ask me. This man, however, with a helmet, no idea why he's got a helmet, but of course, that's EA Sports for you. Mason Rogers, a right wing and a cam, 16 years old, he's got a potential of 94, between 75 and 94, but maybe he can reach the 94 with 4 star weak foot, um, 5 star weak foot, apologies, Three, 4 star skill moves. High attacking work rate, high defensive work rate. He's quick, relatively. <laughs> it looks like he could be on for the future. We could sign him up now, but um, I don't think we want to. If it goes to the development plan, as we can see here, what is suited. I think for his position, probably inverted winger, and then we could change his position later on. I think I think we'll go with that inverted winger and see how it develops him. And then another one is Strom, who looks terrible. We'll get rid of him straight away. I'll we'll get rid of Postuma straight away because they're never going to reach the levels we want them to. As for uh, our squad itself, we have set out the youth scouts, by the way. We've already set that out for the youth scouts. This is our squad at the moment. So Edison is a keeper. We've got Murich, Carson and Stefan. We've also got more players that are... Not on the game, loaned out, but are in fact part of the Manchester City squad. So we'll go through them. They're in our shortlist at the moment. Left-backs, Mendy, Angelino on loan, and Zinchenko. As you can see, Mendy, we did do a bit of editing with the uh, players' ratings. Because I did think some players were underrated or overrated. So Mendy and Zinchenko, I downgraded them both to 78. I think that's fair. I think 80. One for Mendy and 80 for Zinchenko was a bit too much. Diaz, I put him back to 82. I didn't really edit anything on him. I think I just made his long passing better. Uh, he's a ball playing centre back, and he wasn't really that when we we got him. Laporte is the same. John Stone was da downgraded. Garcia the same. Fernandinho the same. Howard Bellis, I think I went up by one. Uh, Ake the same. Cabore player we've got on loan. Cancelo and Walker the same. Porro out on loan. Diego Rossa, a young player signed from the Brazilian league. CDM. He's got zero match sharpness. You can see there. We'll go into that in a second. He is loan listing. Hopefully we can get him out on loan. Only 56 rated. Not fantastic, but could be one for the future. Uh, Rodri, uh, I think I downgraded his pace. It, they had about 65 pace on Rodri, which is generous. So I think I, I took a 5 off that. 
Uh, Jack Harrison out on loan. Tommy Doyle, as you can see, upgraded. He's much better than whatever it was. I think he started at 16. It's a bit unfair. Uh, Gundogan, Yangel Hanea out on loan. Uh, Ante Palversa out on loan. Phil Foden, we all know how good he is. I could have upgraded Phil Foden, really, but he's going to grow anyway, isn't he, on this game? Uh, James McAtee, a young lad, 60, or 60 rated, not 60 year old. He won't be a young lad anymore, would he? 17 years of age. Cole Palmer, another one who's actually made appearances for Manchester City this season. Adrian Bernabe, Felix Nemetia. Uh, a few of these have contracts running out as well. Let me to look at Kevin De Bruyne, Ferran Torres. Looks a great player to me, Ferran Torres. Jaden Braff. Now, he did start at left mid. And uh, in the first two weeks of during the preseason, I made him a left winger. Because you can't actually create left wingers for whatever reason. And he went up by two. So that's nice to see. And obviously, Braff's going to get game time. Another one, Morgan Rogers, Really, really big fan of this player. He's gone up by four just by, by being moved from striker to left winger. Raheem Sterling, of course. Ben Knight, another one. I would have created more young players uh, for the squad. However, you can't make anyone later than 2002 birth. So that meant that quite a lot were cut out. Riyad Mahrez, Bernardo Silva, who would currently convert into a cam because for whatever reason... It's not giving him good stats when he's playing his can, whatever. It's a minus one. You'll know what I mean if you've played this game. If not, I will explain it. Daniel Azani, Gabriel Jesus, who I'm trying to convert to a left winger. Then I'll probably convert him back to a striker. But I just want him to be able to play on the left wing because at the moment he can't. Uh, Liam Delap looks a top player from what I've seen. Sergio Aguero, Lucas Nemecha. And finally, this man, Bustos, is out on loan. Possibly a good player. We don't know. Um, so as you can see the de development plans there we've, we've gone with different things so Delap's a mobile striker Jesus is left winger Bernardo Silva attacking midfielder and then different ones it's quite interesting but inverted winger for Rodgers because I want him to be more of a striker Sterling inverted winger because he's the same Braff inverted winger Torres left winger from a right winger so he can play there and then we'll move him back to probably a right winger because he's a right mid uh, Dynamo for the Metro, and it just changes different ones of their stats. As you can see, there with Palmer, it's concentrating his attacking positioning, his stamina, his sprint speed. And stamina is a massive one for young players because they tend to have really young stamina. And uh, that needs to be something that's improved upon. So we're, we're going through a lot of them are unbalanced. I don't know why Gundogan has got this little um, sort of acceleration logo. I think that means that he is at the point where he needs to be trained now if you want to train him because he's running out of time. I saw it next to the Brian as well. Rodri trained to be a centre-back. I'd like him to be able to play centre-back because of his speed, because of the certain things that I've played with him and the way he is. I think a centre-back will see him more. Ross or Anchorman. I did want to make Kyle Walker a centre-back and then back to right-back. He's too old. It'd take, I think it's 500 weeks. Let's let's just have a quick look. You'll see here, 500 odd weeks to make Kyle Walker a centre-back. 309 weeks, sorry, that, that, that's about five years, I think, so that's not going to be happening, considering he's 30, by the time he's 35, it will be a waste of time. Uh, Cancel, as you can see, Kyle Walker, he's closer to 84 than he is 85, so he's on the, the decrease. Uh, Cancelo balanced, Ake and Howard Bellis, ball, play, ball playing defenders. Um, Eric Garcia, won't be using him much, he's just there as a squad player, he wants out, and one thing we're going to do is in our transfer policy, we will not hold on to players that don't want to be here if they don't want to be here they will be moved out no matter who it is if someone has to leave we're going to let them go as for transfers we're not going to talk about transfers just yet i think we're going to wait until later on but i will show the transfer hub obviously you're going to see some of our targets now for later on but if i do show you our transfer hub just to look at the players so bazunu is a player that's ours out on loan kuto is got big hopes for him aguilar is he'll be joining us next season luke bolton is uh, some players here, a Kamwa is, any others, and uh, you're seeing a lot of our targets here, which is nice to see, of course. Illich is one of our players, found him. Uh, another Illich there, the two brothers. F uh, Fernandez isn't, is he? Who else? Pablo Moreno is our player. And another one that I'm just going to add now is Slobland Tedic, who supposedly is very highly rated, I think. He is on this game, if we can find him. There we are. First one to come up, Tedic. So we'll add him. Place as well. Six foot three striker, possibly good, quick, strong, good in the air. It looks like they're jumping. Anyway, so there are objectives. There's our squad. And we're going to get straight into the games because it's our first Premier League game against Newcastle United. So as you can see on FIFA 21 now, what they do is they tell you the predicted lineup. 
and we could sim this game if we wanted to. We won't do. I've set up a few formation, different ways we could play. Um, we are going away to St. James's Park, which is something I need to think of. Also, you need to look at fitness now, training the players, what their fitness is, because it's match sharpness as well, and that's different to stamina. Obviously, Diaz isn't match fit. We're going to have a look at that in a second. Newcastle going with a 4-4-2. We are away at St. James's Park, which worries me a little. City centre struggle there. And I think we could be in for a bit of bother. I would go with the usual 4-3-3, but I think today I'm going to go with the 4-2-3-1 um, just because I am that slight worried about Newcastle on the counter. And what I'm going to do is Diaz is not fit for this game, unfortunately. And Ake isn't perfectly match fit either. And neither is John Stones. And now I'm looking at the team. I'm slightly worried that we don't have a centre-back partnership that is fully fit. So Diaz is, as you can see, a match fitness. Anyone in the 80s, I mean, Sergio Aguero is 20. So he's going to come out for Gabriel Jesus. Good job I spotted that. Seeing the 90, 78 for Rodri, match sharpness, but that's fine. I think for Diaz, do we just throw him in there? I don't particularly want to throw him in at the deep end, considering he's a new sign. But we don't have much choice, do we? Stones' his match sharpness is at zero. We should have probably played him more in pre-season, so it looks like Diaz will start, unless... I think we, we do this, and they put Diaz on the bench, and we start Cancelo at right back. And Kyle Walker at centre-back. He can play there. Um, I, I think he'll do a decent job there. If we just look at the instructions now. Join the attack. Overlap. So you're very attacking full-backs. And what we are going to do in the instructions is. Just in case. Because of them two up front. Two strikers against two centre-backs can be a problem. We're going to have Fernandinho on drop between defenders. So he will drop in to play as that third centre-back. So here we are at St. James's Park, a ground I went to not too long ago actually, I managed to have a, a visit there, Newcastle against Manchester City, this is a tough away game to start the season I think, and Derek Ray and Lee Dixon on commentary of course, it will be me on commentary, we won't be hearing them, you've already know the team, Edison starts in goal, the back four of Cancelo, Walker, Laporte and Mendy, the two sitting in midfield, Fernandinho, Captain and Rodri, Mares, De Bruyne and Sterling start as the three in behind. Gabriel Jesus and Sergio Aguero who struggles for fitness at the start of seasons we all know that is on the bench alongside new signings Nathan Ake and Ruben Diaz Ferran Torres doesn't make it into the squad today but that is just a precautionary measure we don't want to throw him in at the deep end like we could have done with Diaz today so here we are St James's Park Premier League first game of the season off we go up against Mendy Nicely done by Mendy. Good defending there. We need to see a good performance from Mendy. Because in our transfer targets, which we haven't gone through yet, a left back is high on the list. Here's Sterling. Foul and Matt Ritchie. Could have been a yellow card for Sterling that. It wasn't. Newcastle are going to swing one in. Rodri read that one from the get-go. And here's Sterling. Jesus. Sterling's much quicker than Dummett. He takes a touch inside. Here's Raheem Sterling. And he tries to pass it. And it does work to Gabriel Jesus. And on the counter, eight minutes in, Manchester City get the first goal of the season. Scored by Gabriel Jesus. Assisted by Sterling. And that was a nice, swift, quick counter attack. Sterling did really well there. And he, he dragged in the crab with the keeper. No in, and I think Yedlin should have stopped that pass really. It wasn't a perfect pass from Sterling. But it doesn't matter. Gabriel Jesus gets his first goal of the season. And he could be pivotal this season if Aguero does struggle for match fitness. And we're getting it a bit older. Injuries start to creep up on you. We've not seen much of the ball, but we don't need to. And he's looking at Sterling there. He looked at him. Didn't mean he could find him. Rodri's in for a tackle and... Left a bit on Richie. Oh, Rodri does really well. And Laporte finds Mares. Jamal Lewis has got Mares and Cancelo running at him. It's Jao Cancelo to Gabriel Jesus. It's 2 0. Jesus has got two goals in 30 minutes. This is legendary and it seems way too easy. Celebrating with the fans. 
just the pace, the skill in behind, and once again, just a tapping for Jesus, poor defending. Really good finish by Jesus. Just under the keeper, slides it under him. Steve Bruce, what is going on, Steve? Newcastle usually so good defensively, really, against City. Today have been really poor. It's working well, the tactics at the moment. Sterling, Jesus, look at the space for Sterling. Sterling and just took a too heavy of a touch trying to get away from the defender. Almiron, that's a nice ball. Chase on. It's knocked out by Ryan Fraser. Porte. Sterling. Jesus. De Bruyne. He can pick a pass, Kevin De Bruyne. And he does. Mendy. Nice cutback. Mares. Oh, it's beautiful from Mares. It's absolutely fantastic from Riyad Mares, who makes it 3 0. Well, this could be a cricket score at this rate 3 0 within 20 minutes. Mendy into Mares. Completely skins the defender there and then just slides it in the bottom corner. What a finish from Riyad Mares. 3 0 we lead. This is the problem for Newcastle. Fernandinho and Rodri are really screening the defence really well. Mendy's got to watch that running behind. He doesn't need to because Fernandinho in for the tackle. The Forte. Richie. It's a nice ball in behind to Almiron. Nice little footwork from Miguel Almiron. Shelby. Good pass to Jolinton and Edison with a save. Need to be better defensively, really. Edison should claim this one, which he does. Fantastic goalkeeper from Edison. Almiron. Wilson. Well played. Defending, you've just got to concentrate a bit. And you can make things happen. And that's half-time. 3-0 we lead. What a first half from the boys in blue. And the fans waving the flags. Of course, no fans in stadiums. But they don't care. What a performance. And Gabriel Jesus definitely has been the top-level Jesus that we expect from him. Half-time, 3-0. Let's get on to the second half. Still. Jesus made the run. De Bruyne, that is a fantastic pass inside the fullback. Jamal Lewis does get there. Mares, De Bruyne, oh, nearly a brilliant pass to Sterling. Rodri's got Shelby, stops him. Oh, he's let him run off him. Kyle Walker. Callum Wilson, Laporte dives in, Callum Wilson makes it 3-1. Well, that seven away clean sheets for the first game has gone. Callum Wilson scored for Newcastle. Poor by Walker, worse by Laporte, I don't know why I dived in there. Callum Wilson, I mean Edison, we can't complain too much about Edison, there's not much you can do about that one. Smashed in by Wilson into the side netting. And Newcastle are back in this game. 3-1. It's a corner kick. And I'm going to have a look at the team here. Because we could make some substitutions. Mendy is uh, slowing. And so is Laporte. Cancelo also. So that is slightly worrying. Um, I think we bring on the many one match fitness. We're going to bring Aguero on. Not for De Bruyne. For Sterling. And put Jesus out on this left hand side. I think we bring Ake on. And Diash on as well. And what we'll do is... Get them... Ake to stay back. Walker to go inverted. Three substitutions. Dangerous game, especially Rodri on the yellow card. But here they come, Sergio Aguero. We need match sharpness, you see. And that these are the three people who we won't be playing when they haven't got match sharpness. So we've got to bring them on. A 3-1 three, three is a healthy scoreline to hold on for two goals. 
Did fancy Rodri to come off. Dubravka. Played long. Ake got a bit lucky there. His first touch is in a blue shirt. Here's Jesus. Rodri. Sergio Aguero. Sergio Aguero takes no time. Shoot on sight policy from Sergio and nearly with his first touch. Hammers that one in. He did sort of slice it, but Dubravka was scrambling. And that could have rifled straight in the top corner from Sergio Aguero. Rodri, big header. Unfortunately, it doesn't fall for... Oh, but Mares, Mares has made up for the mistake. Mares takes such a heavy touch by Riyad Mares there. Possibly my fault, probably my fault, but he should be doing better. Callum Wilson, nice little back heel. Okay, he's getting turned all over the place here. and 3-2. Ryan Fraser. I don't know what's going on at the back. It's going to be City's problem all season, I think, defensively. Okay, getting spun all over here. And then, I mean, Kyle Walker. How he's getting beaten in the air by Ryan Fraser is... I don't know. I really don't know. This is really poor by Kyle Walker. Poor by Edison as well. Why he doesn't stand there? Why is he's run all the way out to Fraser? And Newcastle are very much in this game now. And I'm starting to worry. False a Newcastle player at the other end and they're back in the game. Jesus. Oh, Aguero, that's terrible. He's not that sort of player to be threading the passes. Oh, well done. I'm Eric Laporte. There's a reason I kept him on. Aguero. De Bruyne. Sees Walker. Mares. Oh, De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne makes it 4-2. And that should finish the game off. Well, he said he'd been quiet today. But he pops up when we need him. Great finish by De Bruyne. On his strong foot. Just curls it in. The Bravka does not move. Walker. Back to Mares. Mares into what, uh, De Bruyne. I mean, there's no saving that one, I don't think. The Bravka knows it. As soon as this leaves his foot, which is such power. I mean, the Bravka's looking behind him before the ball's even gone behind him. It's poor goalkeeping. Kevin De Bruyne makes it 4-2. Throw this to Aguero. No one's watching him. De Bruyne. Gabriel Jesus for the hat trick. 5 2. Jesus for the hat trick. De Bruyne with the assist. And what a performance of Gabriel Jesus saying, I have to start this next game. Beautiful back heel by De Bruyne. And Jesus just plants it in the bottom corner. What a finish. Look at this finish by Gabriel Jesus. Five to Manchester City. Defensive performance, not so impressive. Offensive performance, very impressive. Referee sees nothing in it. Jesus. Nice header. De Bruyne. Aguero. He sees Jesus. He was in there, but the referee blows for full time. Five to in the opening day of the season. Really good win for the team. A hat trick for Jesus, which is very promising for a striker who said for a long time needs to step up in Sergio Aguero's absence. And he has done. What a game. Hopefully we can improve defensively, but that's a great start to the season. Well, that's going to bring an end to today's episode. A little bit of a short one, more of an introduction episode with the first game of the season against Newcastle. Plenty more on the way. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Not only FIFA content, there will be PES content coming when the update does come on Pez and also we've got transfer news, game previews all on the channel. Please go over to our website as well. And have a look at that one. Plenty to come on this career mode. Scout reports. Transfers. What happens next. All find out through the episodes. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.